Hey, welcome or welcome back to the channel. This week's video, we are finishing up the living room built-ins that we started three weeks ago. I'm excited to share the process of us building the cabinet doors and the drawer faces and finally start the painting process. For a quick recap, this is what the cabinets looked like last week. When we built the drawer boxes for both of the side cabinets and also built the shelves that went right above the cabinets. So if you wanna see how I finished these built-ins, then just keep watching. The first thing I did was measure the opening of my cabinets and calculate the sizes of all of my rails and stairs for my doors and drawer faces. Once I had all of my measurements figured out and triple checked to make sure they were correct, I began cutting them all down using 1x3 select pine. Several of you said yes in my last video to make a separate video on how to calculate to create drawer boxes. Since I believe calculating measurements for styles and rails for your doors and drawer faces deserves a separate video as well, I will be working on getting those to you soon in a shortened video version. Next, I removed my single blade for my stacked dado blade because I will be joining my stales and rails with dados and tenons. I measured for the blade to be 3 eighths of an inch high and ran a scrap piece to double check. As you can see, it wasn't as center as it could be, so I adjusted the fence and ran another piece just to make sure and this time it was much better. I ran a third piece just to triple check. After I was confident on my settings, I ran every single style and rail through to create a dado. I measured 3 eighths of an inch off of the edge of a scrap piece to check for the correct settings in creating my tenons. Once I was content, I moved on to passing all of my rails through on each end. I switched my dado stack blades back to the single blade so I could rip down the center boards for my doors. Remember to always deduct enough for expansion. After that, it was time to start gluing everything together and clamping them down. Be sure to not glue down your middle panel. You should only have to apply glue through your tenon you created on your rails. I only have three sets of clamps, so while I waited for a few of the doors to set before switching them out, I worked on caulking all of the baseboards and wood fitting all of the nail holes. I used premium wood filler for most of it, but did use natural colored wood filler for the shelves and the countertops since I will not be painting those sections.
Remember, up to this point, I had not secured the shelves, so I did so using these two inch L brackets. I made sure to attach them into the studs to keep them from falling forward. To keep the sides of the shelves from shifting in or outward, I added a couple of brad nails. And then it was back to gluing up some more doors in between. Once all of my doors had cured for 24 hours, I sanded them down using 120 grit. I used some painting caulk and caulked all of the edges where the 1x3 meets the quarter inch panel. This will help to fill any small gaps for when I go to paint and it'll have a better looking finish. Because I built the entertainment system an inch or so shorter than the actual opening, I filled the gap with some trim and then caulked it after securing it. If you're wondering why I didn't build it to the wall, it was because the walls on both sides were not perfectly squared. I wish I was as excited as she was about taping, but I had to tape all of the edges so I could caulk them for a cleaner seamless finish. Next, it was time to install the hinges on the doors. I am using concealed hinges and the guide that the hinges came with.
Once all four of the doors had hinges installed, I secured them to the cabinet and adjusted them as needed. Up until this point, everything was going smooth and then I realized I forgot to calculate for the spacing in between the two middle doors that share the same panel. I used some stir sticks as spacers before securing the doors on there. I used Kills Water Based Formula Primer and sprayed two coats using my Wagner sprayer. I made sure to wait at least two hours and sand it before each coat. While I waited on the second coat to dry, I came back in and sanded the wood filler down, covered all of the areas I would be leaving wood before going in and spraying the same primer in the same way for two coats. Once dry, I moved on to spraying three coats of this water-based urethane paint by Sharon Williams on everything we had primed. I didn't record much of that because it was the same exact process as applying the primer. Once everything was dry, I moved on to measuring and creating the holes for my hardware. Then I attached the drawer fronts to the boxes using a couple of screws and then securing it from the inside with some brad nails. To attach the hardware, I removed the screws, drilled pilot holes through the drawer box, and attached the hardware. I 
After removing all of the tape and paper, I couldn't decide if I wanted to stain or leave the wood natural. For now, I'm going to leave it as is just to see how I feel about it before making the final decision. I like to use a combination of knobs and pulls, so I added knobs to the doors. And that, you guys, is it. It's been an awesome three weeks of working a couple of hours a day to finally get to this point. They came out way better than I had hoped and I just love them. I feel like it gives the living room a center of attention, something to draw your eye to. But we are just getting started with this living room, so be sure to be subscribed, turn on your post notifications, and stay tuned because we're going to be making over the rest of the living room space. I love y'all, be kind, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye!